Let's talk about the interview with Katie Couric. <laughs> Must we? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. You, you, you talk about it in the book, so I, I assume everything in the book yeah, is yeah, fair yeah. game today. It is. You, you do say that it wasn't your best interview. Were you prepped for that interview? Not so much because it was supposed to be kind of a lighthearted, fun, um, working mom, speaking with working mom and the challenges that we have with teenage daughters. It was supposed to be but more lighthearted. Th and we were going to have just one installment, one segment of the, of the interview. And if that went well, if we connected, then we would schedule more. So after the first segment, which didn't go well, I, I didn't do very well. I was annoyed with kind of her badgering of questions and, and didn't do well. So I was very surprised. So why when, did you do the second interview? Well, it was scheduled to do a second and then a third and then a fourth. And I don't know how many segments we finally were uh, uh, pieced together in the package and aired because I was absent too from what the what the final outcome was but I know that there were hours of tape that was shot and I would think that those few minutes that were edited together packaged together and shown to the American public if people only know me from that interview I don't blame people for thinking that I was not qualified that I was ill prepared that um, those things that you would look for in a candidate, say, I was not. Okay, what about this moment when Katie asks you about the books and the magazines that you read? When it comes to establishing your worldview, I was curious, what newspapers and magazines did you regularly read before you were tapped for this to stay informed and to understand the I've world. read most of them, again, with a great appreciation for the press, for the media. But like what coming, ones specifically, I'm curious that you... Um, all of them, any of them that um, have, have been in front of me over all these years. Um, I, have a a I have a vast variety of sources where we get our news to. Alaska isn't a foreign country where it's kind of suggested. It seems like, wow, how could you keep in touch with what the rest of Washington, D.C. may be thinking and doing when you live up there in Alaska? Believe me, Alaska is like a microcosm of America. Now. Obviously, you've read books and magazines. Why didn't you just name some books or magazines? Well, and obviously, I have, of course, all my life, right? I, I, I'm a lover of books and, and um, magazines and newspapers. By the time she asked me that question, even though it was kind of early on in the, in, the, um, in the interview, I was already so annoyed, and it was very unprofessional of me to wear that annoyance on my sleeve. But was it was it like you couldn't think of any in the moment? No, or you were... it was more like, are you kidding me? Are you really asking me? It, to me, it was in the context of, do you read? How do you stay informed? You're way up there. It seemed like she was discovering this uh, nomadic tribe, a member of a tribe from some Neanderthal cave in Alaska, asking me, how do you stay in, in touch with the real world? That's how I, I took the question. So I kind of, well, didn't kind of, I did. I rolled my eyes and, and was annoyed with the question and thought, you know, I think that this is a problem with the state of journalism today is no matter what I say to her, it will probably be twisted perceived okay. as, as a bit negative okay but when you finish that interview and yeah. we've all well maybe you all haven't done them but okay we've all been in situations if not an interview we've all been in a situation where you leave and you say i wished i had said something different so when you finished that interview did you think i wished i had just named some magazines absolutely then we probably wouldn't be talking about it today so you're saying now that the reason why you had the responses to katie kirk is because you were annoyed with her well i was uh, annoyed with where we where we were what we were doing at the time and one of these segments too we had just come off the most amazing rally working the rope line for i don't know how long these energized awesome people and and I'm pumped up, just over the top pumped up with energy and, and so happy. And we're running backstage and, and my friend Bexy, she opens the curtain for me to get backstage. And there's the perky one again with the microphone and the, and the camera's rolling. And I'm like, dang, you know, let, give, me, give me just a couple of the minutes to one, gather. perky Katie? I, with all due respect, yeah, yeah, <laughs> nicely, yeah. Because yeah. you're pretty perky too. No. <laughs> we'll so take... just, just, just a bit. Of, and I, I talk a lot about the Katie Couric interview in the book because I want the transcript too to speak for itself mm -hmm. to show that she asked me 12 different times my position on abortion in the morning after pill. She did not want, I guess, to hear my first candid, truthful response about being pro-life and, and wanting to um, usher in a, a culture of life and empower women to know that they are strong enough and smart enough to have that child. I gave my answer and she asked it mm, again. And it kind Although of you do.